So I was recently thinking about the mistakes I've made during the course of developing my game, things that I could have done better. And one thing in particular stood out to me, and that is my early approach to systems design and level design, namely the order in which I did these. So in this video, I wanna talk about the biggest mistake I made and the valuable lesson I learned. And hopefully someone out there can benefit from this. The biggest mistake I made was designing levels and level flow prior to locking down my various systems. And by systems, I mean enemy types, NPCs, elevators, teleporters, anything that can have an influence and impact on the player. So let me explain exactly how and why this became a problem for me. When I started this project, I was more inexperienced, a lot more impulsive, that's for sure. And I started naively creating all these intricate level maps. I thought I would create all the levels and then I would drop in all the different components and enemies like seasoning a dish, a locked door there, an enemy there, and just kind of move things around to make it fit. But that was a big mistake. You see, as the game progressed, more systems were introduced and those new systems were no longer really compatible with the levels I'd created. And I did anticipate this to a degree, but I thought, you know, I'll just make it fit somehow. And from discussions I've had with other indie developers, this seems to be a common misstep we make. It's a chicken and egg dilemma. You know, what do you start with? The map and all the walkable terrain? Or do you start creating all the systems that can go in that map first? Intuitively, it's easy to believe the structure should come first. You know, you build a house and then people move into that house. But what if those people have special requirements or needs? Living in that house could suddenly become very impractical. So in those cases, it's better to build a custom made house for those inhabitants. And while you probably can get to a reasonable outcome by building the house first, as the game grows, it will become painful. <laughs> I speak from experience here because rejiggling levels once they're already in the engine is an absolute nightmare. All the tiles are one thing, but then you have all the triggers, camera triggers, event triggers, boundaries. It's a huge pain in the ass to edit these things and importantly, a massive time sink. And one way I like to conceptualize it is that games are about the systems and the level is a vehicle to carry the player from one system to the next. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't do any map or level work. I believe it's probably wise to have an idea of the general shape of a level. You know, is it gonna be vertical? Is it gonna be horizontal? Is it a more of a complex dungeon? But in terms of the finer details, you know, how long should a corridor be? How tall should a ceiling be? Should there be a ledge here, a step there? That stuff should probably wait until the systems are locked down. It'll create a lot less friction for you. You know, game design can be hard or less hard. And there is no perfect path. Most map-centric games, you know, side-scrollers, 2D and 3D platformers, top-down dungeon crawlers, will continue to be tweaked and polished until their flow feels just right, well into development. You know, QA typically doesn't happen until all the stuff is playable at which point you might realize that, oh, all these levels are too long, I need to shorten them, or a bunch of levels are boring and need to be reworked. And sometimes that work can be significant. But this is kind of what it takes, I suppose, to make great games. And still, sometimes they don't turn out to be great. And it's tricky because both levels and their systems have a symbiotic relationship where changing one will have an effect on the other. It's all hard though, you know, game design and game development, it's pure pain. <laughs> it really is. But it's the good kind, right? You know, it's the self-inflicted masochistic torture that has us smiling as it, you know, breaks us on the wheel. But we can save ourselves from a bit of that pain by sequencing some of our work in the correct order, namely around these systems, especially things like player abilities and enemies. Now, of course, I'm talking within a context of a particular type of game. Different games will have a slightly different context. You don't wanna just throw a bunch of enemy types into a level that isn't tailored around that encounter. Let's say you had a big executioner type enemy with a huge swinging sword. Let's say you've got two of them and you want the player to fight them. The player needs enough space to maneuver adequately for that battle to become fun. You don't want them hitting some um, strange wall geometry or clipping their head on the ceiling, unless that's part of the kind of experience you're trying to create. But for the most part, 
it's not going to be fun. This is particularly so with uh, flying enemies. You have to be careful about their placement. The player needs the right amount of kind of buffer. This ties back into the principles of fairness and agency. You want a game to feel fair and you want the play to feel like they are in control and not being done dirty by a level design. So do your very best to lock down all these things before creating those maps. You know, list out all the different components and systems precisely, how they will behave and how they will impact the player. This approach will help systems feel embedded into the game rather than superficially dropped on top like, you know, cake decoration. And it doesn't necessarily mean that all systems need to be functional because to front load all that system to work, it could take a very long time before you get to any level design. And level design is fun and we want to get there sooner. So what you can do, which I like to do sometimes, is to actually just have a sprite of that enemy type and you know have a description in a book or a notepad nearby about what that enemy type does and you can kind of just imagine that space you don't always have to code up every aspect of that enemy but it helps if you can do it another thing i do which you might find useful i like to create different scenarios for my components on paper. Then once you have them all, you can kind of treat them as puzzle pieces and kind of link them together in interesting ways. And again, using the level as a vehicle to transport the player between systems. And it does take some discipline. You know, it's easy to want to run in and just create all these cool, fun level maps. I know I did it too, and it cost me a lot of time. You know, I trashed just about all the early maps I made, but I'll chalk it up to learning time, you know, because that's part of the process too. Good level design is an extremely challenging thing to accomplish, and it's very time consuming. So if we can avoid reworking and retiling large batches of levels, that's probably gonna be a good thing. So thanks for watching guys. Let me know down below what you think about this approach. Do you have some of your own strategies and or some experiences you can share with the community? I'd love to hear them, and I'm sure they'll be beneficial to others working on games. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.